Hello, party people. Welcome back to another video. So today we'll talk about the same thing, which is questioning. You just got to start. Start from somewhere. That's the beauty of questioning, the beauty of truth, the beauty of learning, is that once you start, it just snowballs. Now, the important thing is to start. Start in whatever you're doing in your life. And it doesn't have to be religion sense. It could be anything that you're doing in life. You have to question what you're doing, why you're doing it, what is the reason, what is the purpose of it. And as you get more and more into it, you'll see that everything leads to life in terms of understanding the universe. And that's the beautiful thing about life is that we have the intellectual capacity to wonder, to be curious. And it's a beautiful thing. Learning is a beautiful thing. And learning comes with question. The more thoughtful questions that you can come up with, the more exciting your learning will be. And with regards to truth, beliefs, faith, it all matters because your belief or whatever you hold as a truth or your faith, it guides your way of life. So in Smileyism, we, we always say that um, Smileyism is a way of life. Yes, it is a way of life. And so is science. Science is also a way of life. Anything and everything is a way of life. Democracy is a way of life. And so whatever you hold as values, as principles, as beliefs, question those things every now and then to ensure that they're valid. Because whatever you hold as your belief, as truth, they're going to impact your way of life. Now, for example, let's say, let's take a Sunni Muslim, okay? The Sunni Muslim, they're born into Sunni Islam and they go on practicing Sunni Islam and now they're like, say, 20 years old. And then they come across Smilism and they go, oh my God, this is so great, you know? And they go, what? I was wasting my time being a Sunni. So they convert to Smilism. And then you take another Smiley and that's Smiley. Let's say he's been Smiley for about 20 years at the same time. And then he, come, he comes across just learning, questioning, looking at life as it is. And they go, oh my God, this is crazy. Smileyism was a waste of time. Not in a waste of time, it was like a complete waste of time. But at the end of the day, it, it wasn't the truth. It wasn't um, the reality of life. It was a belief system. And a belief system that I was led to believe that it was the truth. So whatever time you spend in any belief, whether it's Smileyism, Sunnism, Catholic, um, Parson, Hinduism, Buddhism, Paganism, whatever, whatever belief you have, science, Scientology, or whatever, the moment... You are believing those things. You cannot get that time back. So as long as you're true to your belief, at least you won't regret being in that belief when tomorrow you realize, hey, this belief is limited. It's it's only true if I believe it to be true. It's not true for the sake of being true. So at least you have some peace of mind that, hey, I was trying my best. And that's the beauty of being honest to yourself. You have to be honest to yourself. So if you're going to be a smiley, be honest to yourself as a smiley. Um, it is natural for people to be curious. It is natural for people to question. What happens is, as a child, you're normally in that state where you like to question, you like to learn. And you ask these questions to your parents, to your teachers. And what ends up happening is because they don't know themselves, they make up things or they defer the question. We have a saying that people kick the can down the road, right? That keeps happening, keeps happening. And what happens by the time you get through with high school, college, you're looking to get married, buy a house, have kids. You're now in your 30s or 40s and you're like, oh, okay, let me think about what I was doing. And by that time, it's too difficult to bring about significant change in your life. As an older person, it is very difficult for you to change your fundamental beliefs. The reason is because change is difficult. That's just the reality of it. Change is difficult. So as you are growing up as a child, let's say the people listening to this, it's 2050 right now, right? Because the people today listening to it, really, we're not really ready to listen to these things because education is still far behind. And in the Western world, we're lucky that we have a lot more education. People are more open to learning. People are open to questioning. People are open to challenging their beliefs. And it's a wonderful, beautiful thing. And if you look at, for example, the Western countries, you can really see in pockets where you really have uh, no compulsion in religion. Like here, people believe what they want to believe. They follow what they want to follow. There's no real persecution. But if you look at Middle East, or if you look at Pakistan, if you look at countries like that, they, they believe that there's no compulsion in religion. But obviously, there are significant ramifications for not going with the crowd. And this is 2023 we're talking about. So imagine a thousand years ago, 500 years ago, how bad it was. These people would literally take other people's lives for not believing what they believe or saying things that was different from what they believe. And you can see that example in um, Allah Laj, Mansur Allah's story, right? He, for himself, he came to a different conclusion than what the peers around him believed in. Right? And what did the Muslims do? They literally took his life. They hurt him and they took his life. That's what these people do because they cannot stand being questioned. They cannot stand being challenged. They cannot stand being in the light. They cannot stand reason. They cannot stand logic. Because logic and reason doesn't work in faith. Faith signifies absence of reason, absence of evidence, absence of logic. It's a belief. Now, you cannot argue or have a debate or have a conversation with somebody that believes in something because you don't need to prove it. That's, that's, that's what belief is. Right? You, don't need to, you don't need to prove it. It's whatever you believe, you believe in it. So 
that's a particular way of looking at life, right? So you go with a belief and you follow it and practice that belief all throughout your life and you, you die with that belief. Right? So while you're practicing that belief, it affects the people around you, it affects the society. Now, if it didn't have any effects, like if you were living in isolation, nobody would care what you believe, you know? It doesn't affect the other person. But the reality is that we live in a global society. We live in one world. We all share this planet. So what you believe, what I believe, what anybody believes has an impact on other people. The point is, and you might not be ready for this, is to really ask the question, is belief necessary? Any belief, okay? Whether the belief that there's no God or believe that there is a God, both of those are belief systems. Are those two beliefs even necessary? Like we live in a society where um, it's kind of given that there is an entity out there. If you look at paganism, there's a stone God. If you look at Abraham religion, there's a uh, non-form God. But the concept of God, that there's another entity out there that are pulling the strings, it seems like it's embedded. And it's very unfortunate that even in 2023, we're living in a society that is there um, as a default in most cultures, in most countries. Hopefully, in the future, we will not have it. The default will be learning. The default will be questioning. The default will be living in the present, a religion of the present, the religion of the now. That is a religion. That is what the reality of religion is. Religion, a true religion requires constant evaluation of one's beliefs, one's point of view. So that if something comes along and it negates what you originally believed in, you move on. Right? You don't hold on to it. And that takes courage. And the reality is we don't have courageous people in the world today because from childhood, we are breeding children to just be indoctrinated into a particular set of ideas. Now, not all ideas are bad. Right? For example, the idea that we should be kind to one another, the idea that we should respect one another. Those are universal ideas. They're not bound to any religion. So those are good ideas and they're good ideas because on a daily basis, every one of us, when we practice being kind to each other, we can see the benefits of it, right? So in reality, we get feedback from other humans, other society members telling us that this value, this idea of being kind to one another, it's a wonderful thing, right? Now, people in religious societies, they are kind to their own kind. When it comes to other people, they come with a negative perspective that the other person is not living in the truth and only they are living in the truth. And that's why they hold on to their belief. I highly request that you try out living without any belief and you live in the present, live in the now and keep learning, keep questioning and then come to a state where you find solace, you find comfort, you find satisfaction, you find contentment in what life is. And there are many individuals who have came and gone and there will be many individuals that will come after me and after other people. And out of that, there will be a few people that will come to the conclusion that we are all in this together. We are one. There is a beautiful video that Carl Sagan, I think he was a scientist or something. Uh, it's regarding the pale blue dot. And it's a beautiful picture in which you see the one of the satellites take a picture of the Earth from the space. And you can see that Earth is a very small pale dot, pale blue dot. And it's I encourage you to go listen to that um, video that Carl Sagan has produced. It makes you realize things from a whole different perspective. And that's the other thing. See if your perspectives in life are changing. See if in your life, you're seeing things from different point of views. Smileyism is a one point of view. It is not the only point of view. Go out there and see the other point of views. And it may seem very weird, but as you learn, as you keep questioning, as you learn the nature of these gurus, you will start to see how corrupt someone like Avikan is. It's in their nature as gurus, as people who come proclaiming that, hey, I am XYZ because I've been bestowed XYZ from this XYZ God. Like, that's in their nature. They will not stop. And that's why your freedom, your true freedom, is freedom from these individuals that think they know better than you. No, you know what's best for you. That doesn't mean you don't engage with Allah. That doesn't mean you can't learn anything from Allah. That doesn't mean you can't learn anything from anybody else. You engage with them. You learn from them. But when you realize that what they're really selling is a lie, you have to have the capacity, the intellectual capacity to see what they're doing to you. And the only way you can do that, the only way you can understand their tactics is to learn. And that involves talking to people. That involves introspection. That involves reading. That involves questioning. So you have to do that for yourself. And if you don't care, well, it doesn't matter, right? I mean, nobody cares if you don't care. If you want to be a slave to some other person, other entity, some made of God, that's your choice. It's your life. And I don't care whether you are Smiley or not a Smiley, or you're Sunni or not a Sunni, or Catholic or Protestant. I don't care. Right? The reality is the reality. And the reality is all these religions proclaim a claim to truth. And they're all made up. They're an imagination. They're an illusion. They're a maya. 
and the only person that can see through these things is the person that has some that has done internal work and that person is free now yes if they, that person lives in a society such as in the middle east where you have government that indirectly forces you to be a muslim on the outside you say i'm a muslim you know or if you lived in a christian domination you say i'm a christian right that doesn't mean in their heart that they believe that and that's the beautiful thing about that is nobody can force you internally to believe in illusion right but on the outside for your own safety for your own protection for your own health whether that's physical health or mental health you go out there and you pretend to be whatever other the society wants you to be when you're in that uh, area but the way you are with yourself inside in your own house in your own safe space that's who you truly are so that's the beautiful thing about that person who's free and that freedom is something that i wish everybody experienced because it's amazing and that comes to you when you're honest to yourself and honesty or honesty to thyself is crucial in life because if you're not honest to yourself and if you're lying to yourself well, then you don't respect yourself and if you don't respect yourself other people are not going to respect you so go out there and find out who you are do some inner work and enjoy this beautiful life that we have and again this is a long journey it's not gonna it's not gonna happen overnight but it happens with a single question and the single question is that question that is meaningful enough to you to find out the answer to that question and as you go into these questions it will be a snowball effect and you will get to the deeper and deeper questions and half the battle is asking the right question but you don't get to the right question until you've been through so many questions that lead you to that question so i wish you guys best of luck i wish you guys well have a beautiful day and continue living this beautiful life as you see fit i wish you well bye